It's not often I'm actually grateful to the Chinese government, but today is one of those days because I'm always intrigued to know if what I'm telling you is 100% correct. And it turns out we now have the exact specifications, details for the batteries, the two different types of batteries, and the actual power, a bunch of things for the new Model 3 Highland. This is really all thanks to the Chinese government forcing companies in China to reveal these details to them, and then they really reveal them to the public. So here are the exact specifications of the new Model 3. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. I'd love to see you at the Melbourne EV show. Not just EV show. It's a Melbourne Electric Everything show. Biggest car show. Biggest EV show ever in Australian history. In fact, there'll be way more companies and brands there than what there were at Fully Charged Live, which I was at earlier this year. I'll be there at 1 p.m. on Saturday, September the 23rd. We'd love to see you there. So, Model 3 sizing. It's slightly bigger. But before we get there, let's just start with the actual differences in terms of the motor. Well, it's not really any different, I don't think, anyway. The standard range model has a single motor rear wheel drive with 194 kilowatt, something about 280 horsepower, and a dual motor all wheel drive version. Of course, you all know that the two versions, the standard range rear wheel drive, then the dual motor all wheel drive version adds a second motor. It's adding a 137 kilowatt motor to the front, giving the vehicle a total power of 331 kilowatt, which is the same as before. So it seems to have the same motors as far as I can tell. It is interesting to see those actual power figures though. It's surprising the Tesla Model 3 can go so quickly, just over six seconds, considering it doesn't have all that much power. The standard range model, 194 kilowatt, it's pretty impressive performance, considering that low power number. Anyhow, the other interesting thing is that front motor. It's clearly a different motor. It's got 137 kilowatt versus the rear motor with 194 kilowatt. So maximum power, long range version, 331 kilowatt, it's about 400, 85 horsepower, around about that. What else do we know? The rear wheel drive single motor variant has an LFP battery from CATL. We don't know if it's the new version. Of course, there is a new version of the LFP battery. The CATL have said that they mass producing from January onwards. There's also the M3P battery. It doesn't have the M3P battery, unfortunately. It could have a newer, up, more updated LFP battery version from CATL. We don't know that. Tesla doesn't want to disclose that information, probably for good reason. People don't buy when they think that, um, well, the Model Y might have a new battery soon, possibly. What's the weight? The weight of the standard range version is 1,760 kilos. What is that in pounds? It's exactly 3,880 pounds. And that means it's pretty well on par with other, other vehicles in its, in its range. For example, the petrol powered or the gasoline powered Mercedes C-Class weighs about that. So very similar. The all wheel drive dual motor variant, it has an NMC, so nickel, manganese and cobalt battery pack, a ternary battery, not LFP of course, that's made by LG Energy Solutions in South Korea. That has a curb weight of 1,823 kilos, meaning it is exactly 4,019 pounds. So only a 63 kilogram difference in the weight. Now, obviously the LFP battery is a smaller pack than the battery pack in the long range version of these cars. So yeah, it is an interesting decision. You've got a bit of a dilemma here. Obviously, the LFP battery chemistry is going to be better for most people, unless you live in somewhere that's really, really cold. It's going to be better because you can charge to 100%, discharge, and not really worry about de degradation. The NMC version gives you more range, right? You're going to get an extra about 65 miles of range. But is that really true in the real world if you don't want to charge that battery beyond 80%? If you want to charge it beyond 80%, you don't care about potentially a little bit more degradation, uh, then it doesn't matter to you. But that is a key question that you've got to ask yourself. Dimensions are a little bit bigger. Wheelbase is exactly the same, but the car is 35, but the car is actually 36 millimeters longer. It's 4,720 millimeters long, 
1,848 millimeters wide and 1,442 millimeters high. Its wheelbase is 2,875 millimeters. However, a lot of people are reporting that it's the same ride height as before. It's not, it's lower. Lowering the ride height has is one of the things that's enabled Tesla to get more range out of the new version of the Model 3. So what does that mean? The facelifted 3 is 26 millimeters longer. The rest of the dimensions are exactly, pretty much exactly the same. Tire sizes, 23540R19s for the 19 inch wheels, 23545R18s for the 18 inch wheels. Very, very similar to each other there. The prices, what are the prices in China? Well, the price in China is 35,650 US dollars. It's gone up in price and the all wheel drive version costs 40,600 US dollars. So not much of a difference, only 5,000 US dollars to get the all wheel drive version with two motors, a lot more power, uh, you know, more range. Is it worth getting it? Well, I have ordered one. Now my plan is simply to test the car for you guys. I'll probably have a couple of months and then I'll sell it. That's what I want to do and tell you guys what my real opinion is on this car. Oh, I really want to find out what the what's really going on inside the battery pack. Why Tesla's cars with LFP batteries get better range than other cars with LFP batteries. I want to know what that is. Anyhow, I bought the standard range version. I personally think it's the best value for money. But part of that reason is if you buy the standard range version, you get EV incentives for the car here in Australia. If you get the long range version, you don't qualify for those incentives. That's a little bit of an influence on my decision, but more I was interested in the LFP battery itself. Guys, I really want to know what you think. If you're going to choose between the two, whether that's Model Y or Model 3, would you get LFP or the NMC battery from LG Chem? You all know what I think about LFP. I think it's definitely superior than, you know, than NMC batteries. But of course, you are sacrificing a little bit of range if you go for LFP. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.